Welcome to Storks and Brewing. My name is Randy and this is a channel that's all about home distillation and brewing. So what do we got going on today? Well today I need a... Well I'll tell you what we're going to do is make some moonshine, uh, corn moonshine, because I need a base for a project that I'm working on which uh, I think you're all going to find interesting. So what I do need is a base for some flavored moonshine. Alright, so this is going to be my base spirit. Uh, so, if you guys have any ideas out there of what kind of flavored moonshine you would like to see, hey, throw them in the description and and if I can work them out, I will. Okay? But it's, this is all for a future project I think you guys will really enjoy. Okay. So my, my final product will be is somewhere around after distillation, I'm going to use my uh, plate column just to boost so I can get a little bit higher proof. I would love about an end product to somewhere around 120 proof. I'd settle for 100, but I'm shooting for 120 in the final product. Uh, like I said before, this is going to be a corn-based uh moonshine it is I got 14 pounds of corn and I got four pounds of malted six row of uh, malted six row barley all right so this video is going to be about making the mash okay and then because uh, we just can't squeeze it all in one video right okay so what I got going on is I got me five gallons of uh, water I'm gonna heat that up to a boiling and while we're doing that I gotta get my corn milled up. Okay, so let me get that done and then we'll be back. Okay, so where were we at? Well, we got all our corn milled. Okay. And why do we mill the corn? Well, the, the main reason we mill the corn is because if you take a, a kernel of corn, it's got the hard shell on the outside. Well, we can't really penetrate that hard shell very good. We want that stuff, the starch that's inside that kernel we want to try to get to that because that's where we're going to get our eventually get our sugar we're going to convert that starch over into sugar okay so we crack it open to help release it and then the next thing we do to get the starch released is we cook the corn okay so I've warmed up hot or water it's boiling we're going to mix it with the corn and the water together and what it will do is it will gelatinize, hydrogenize, hydrogenize that corn to get that starch out of the shells so that we can use the enzymes that's in the barley and I might use a little bit of high temperature enzyme too to help out to get to convert that starch over into sugars. So that's our that's what we're trying to get to. Okay so I got water boiling here. I'm going to add it to my mash tun. And basically, the mash tun is just to store heat. Okay? So, let me put some of that over in to my mash tun. And what's the exact amount? Well, I don't really know. Well, let's put a few gallons over here. Then we can add more, okay? I mean, that's... Alright, let's add a little bit of corn. Alright, but one thing you want to make sure that you do not do, don't put your barley in yet because uh, the high temperature will kill the enzymes that's in that barley. It's a little too hot for that. But the corn is not going to matter. So let's start adding our corn. Alright, and we want to just make sure we give it a good stir to try to keep the uh, clumps out. There's the first container. This smell is always so fantastic, though. By the end, it's going to start getting thick, and then once it starts gelling up, it will be a big clump, but we can work with it. So 
Yeah, just keep stirring it. Because if you get a dry spot, we won't get no sugars out of that dry spot. No, we, we want them, I, I assume it says sugars, I meant starches. I mean, it's like a porridge. Let me add a couple more dips of water. I mean, you can cook the corn on in a pot. I've known a lot of people do that way. But I found this just works good, and then there's no chance of me of scorching it. You know, scorching is terrible. All right, what do we got now? And we're looking at about 180 degrees. I'll just leave it there. Actually, no, I will add Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set a timer for an hour and a half. But what I will do probably in, I don't know, 20 minutes or so, I'm going to come back and just add a little bit of high temperature Amazon just to help start breaking this down because it's going to get pretty, uh, pretty, pretty thick. Okay, so we'll see you in a little bit. All right, it's been a half hour. I just want to check it. Give it a stir. I mean, it's getting. I mean, it's getting thick. Okay. I want to double check my temperature. And we are looking at. Uh, it's 175. Okay. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in, according to the directions of high temperature enzyme. Uh, it works between 150 and 190, and it suggests two teaspoons for, per five gallon. Okay, so let's put two teaspoons in. One, two. And what that's going to do is it's going to help start breaking it down so that, uh, our barley don't have to work so much. Okay. We're going to let that sit, covered up, and we're going to let it finish the next hour. Alright. Okay, it's been an hour and a half. Alright, well the high temperature enzymes is really doing its job because there's a lot of, let me bring you over so you can see this, there's a lot of clear liquid on top. See all the nice clear liquid on top? Okay, so that, that means the high temperature enzyme is doing its job. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is we're going to mix in our six over barley. And it's been milled. Give it a good stir. But I did check my temperature. It was below 155. I'm going to recheck it though. 158. That's perfect. You don't, want, you don't want to add your grains in if it's too hot because it could denature it. We want them enzymes to do their thing. Okay, 
Alrighty. So, what we want to do is reset our uh, time to another hour and a half and just let them enzymes do their thing. And then uh, we'll be, then what we're going to do is use my, I'm going to use my sieve and we'll put this into a fermentation bucket. And, okay, it's been an hour and a half. Oh, I'm sure this is done, but you know what? There's one way to check to make sure that the conversion is done. We'll give it a little stir. Alright, so what I want to do is let's take a little sample. Alright. Alright, we got us a little sample. I think we can leave that sit for a little bit longer. It's almost, but not quite. Let's try this again. Alright, yeah, see where it just basically goes back to the same color? No black at all, so that means all the conversion is done. Conversion is done. I got my sieve bucket here. The bucket. I got a bottling bucket. It sits on top of there, and I'm also using a grain bag. So, all I got to do is dip the mash and it will uh, give me some good clean Okay, let me finish this up and then I'll be right back. I just cap how my system works. I pour everything, all my grain into my sieve. It drains through the holes into the bottling bucket on below. And a nice clean uh, mash going into my fermentation bucket. Okay? Simple, huh? Okay, let's see what uh, starting gravity we got. One point oh eight oh. Okay. One point oh eight oh. One point oh eight oh. All right. Grains are just about done draining. I'm gonna let it sit there and drain for a couple minutes. I'm almost to six gallon mark on my fermentation bucket, and then uh, then we'll move to the next step. Okay. All right. Let's see what our pH is. Five eight. No, 5 8, you know what? I'm going to leave it right there. I, I'm, I'm going to leave it right there. Okay, so I checked my starting gravity, Pacific gravity, and that was 1.080. Um, very good with that. Uh, we did check our pH, and it was 5.8, I believe. I wonder what it was? Yeah. And I, I think I'm going to just leave it there. But if I wanted to, uh, to, to, make it more acidic, lower the pH, I would add some citric acid, but if I wanted to raise the pH, I could add uh, baking soda to adjust that pH if I wanted to. Alright, um, so what do we got next? Alright, the very next thing to do is I need to check the temperature. I'm going to bet it's going to be a little bit too warm to put in my yeast. Yeah, it's well. Um, 117, 117 degrees. So what I'll do is I'm gonna just put a lid on, put it in the fermentation room, and after a while I will pitch the yeast. And uh, after that, seven to ten days, uh, it should be ready to run. Okay. 
And like I said before, this is a base for our moonshine. Uh, I think it'll turn out pretty good, and then we'll follow up with, with that after that, okay? Uh, okay, so in the next video, what we're going to do is we're going to distill this out, and we are going to use my 2-inch, let me put it up right away, bubble plate. Uh, because like I said before, I want just a little bit higher proof. And so I will cut it down to eh, somewhere between 120 and 100 proof. Okay. Um, and we're going to, like I said before, we're going to use this as our moonshine base. I do have a project coming up that it's going, I needed it for. Um, I am going to make some flavored moonshines. Um, it seems like a lot of people like that. So, if you have any ideas of what flavored moonshine you would like to see, hey, please put them in the uh, 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 description box, and we'll pick some out, and we'll do some of them, okay? Uh, let's see, what else? Hey, if you like this video, please hit that subscribe button. Uh, Share, you know, give it, might as well hit that notification, notification bell, birds, and share this with your friends, give us that thumbs up if you like it, and please leave a comment and I'll get back to you, okay? Um, and the last thing I got to say, hey, thanks for stopping by and we'll see you next time here on Still Works and Brewing. Cheers, everybody.